Hey folks, it's Pat here. Got another chapter 13 question I want to cover real quick. And then um, after, and it, this one's pretty straightforward. So after you after you knock out the, the one where you actually draw the line, um, this is probably the next best one to do or the next easiest one to do. And that's um, linear relationship and the sample correlation coefficient. Okay, so, um, and this is going to throw in a couple different terms here, but basically it's a visual problem, kind of like the last one. Where if if you kind of understand what you're looking at, then some of the some of the terms start to make a little bit more sense, and so it gives you four plots on this one, and it's going to ask you four different questions. Um, I think all of them ask four. We'll find out here pretty soon. <laughs> all right, based upon the different plots that are given, notice that each plot has a data set and then the actual um, the graph, and so. Each one of these data sets is defined by two variables. So like this one is an XY data set, this one's UV, WT, and an MN. And then these questions down here will ask you um, to compare all of these in different ways. And so like for this one, for which data set is a sample correlation coefficient R equal to negative one? The correlation coefficient is just basically how closely related are the two variables. So like this one, if M goes up by one, does N go up by one? Um, so anything that has like a perfect correlation coefficient would have um, or a, a perfect relationship between the two would have a correlation coefficient of one. And so correlation coefficients go from negative one to positive one. They never go past that. Okay. And so you can think of it sort of as a percent. All right. So, but now unlike most percents, you can actually have a negative one. It'll make more sense in, in future videos, but right here, I just kind of want you to get used to it. So negative one would be a per perfectly inverse relationship. And so a perfectly inverse relationship looking from left to right on this would go down, all right, one for one, all right. This one right here, xy, has a perfect positive relationship, and so its correlation coefficient would be positive one, because notice that for every time that our x goes up by one, our y goes up by one, x goes up by one, y goes up by one. So this is a perfectly positive one correlation coefficient, and this one has a perfectly positive relationship. We don't have one that has a negative one, and so that's what makes these problems a little tricky, is because sometimes there's a none <laughs> on these, all right? And so you just have to kind of go through these and take a look at them. So which data set indicates the strongest negative linear relationship? So negative linear relationship would be, of course, going from left to right, it would slope downwards. And so out of all of these, this is the only one that has a little bit of a negative relationship. You can see how the X's kind of trend downwards after a little while. And so it's going to be this one right here, which is MNN. Okay. For which data set is a sample correlation co coefficient R closest to zero? Well, zero would mean that there's really no relationship between X and Y. So remember this one would be positive one, and if it was perfectly you know, marching downwards, it would be negative one. And so if it, the correlation coefficient is close to zero, there is no relationship between the two things. And so it looks like a sneeze, right? So if it looks like somebody sneezed on it, like this one right here, then that's probably the one where the, where the coefficient R, the correlation coefficient of R is closest to zero. And so that would be U and V right here, okay? And which data set has an apparent positive but not perfect linear relationship? This one's perfectly positive. This one's kind of positive, but it certainly isn't perfect because it's still kind of janky, all right? And so that one's going to be this one, W and T. So just remember, positive relationship is going to march upwards, reading from left to right. Negative relationship is going to march downwards, reading from left to right. Always read these from left to right. Go ahead and give that a check here. And there we go. We got all those. All right. Now there's one more that I want you to watch out for, and that's nonlinear relationships. And sometimes it asks you questions on nonlinear relationships. We don't have one right here. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep going here until I find one where it shows you what a nonlinear relationship looks like. All right. Because that's important. All right. So let's see. Still don't have one. All right. Let's try again. Um, We'll give it one more shot here. 
see if we can get a nonlinear relationship. This this right here is a nonlinear relationship. All right. So every now and then it'll ask you a question on a nonlinear relationship. It's usually a quadratic relationship, which means that it changes its shape over time. It's nonlinear. It's not a line. <laughs> okay. So this is not a line. It's a curve. <laughs> okay. And so this is a nonlinear relationship, but it's still predictable. Okay. So it's just not actually, you know, going along a linear function. And so let's run through this one here real quick as a little bit of last practice. Which data set indicates perfect positive? This one right here is perfect positive. So that's M and N. M and N. Which data set is there evidence of strong nonlinear relationship? Whenever you see a curve like this, all right, where it's defined and you can clearly see it, that is a nonlinear relationship. So that one's going to be X and Y. Okay, which data set has apparent positive but not perfect? So this one, it's marching upwards and they're kind of all trending that way. And so, but it's not perfect like this one. So it's going to be this one right here, W and T. And then finally, which data set indicates a strong and it's negative linear relationship? That would be this one right here. Because remember negative, reading from left to right, it's going to march downwards. And so that one was U and V. Okay, so I'm glad we found one of those because you don't always find the ones that have the nonlinear relationship. But just remember, nonlinear relationship, it's going to have a distinct curve to it, whereas all linear relationships are going to basically be straight lines. All right, hope that helps. Um, chapter 13, linear relationship, sample correlation coefficient. You can knock this one out pretty quick. And uh, we'll see you with some of the harder ones here pretty soon. See you there.